four. Like what? What? That that blows me away. I have actually had her on this podcast. <gasps> Tell me everything. It's I, right. I, I mean, the same thing. It's like it happened through like it was a friend of a friend. Like I have a really good friend who knows. So it is just I was like, okay, let's make this happen. Yeah, you have moments where you're like, holy crap, like this is the real deal. And she is yeah, and unfiltered it's... and she she goes through the, this landscape of talk shows. Like she she knows Drew and like she knows what's going on. She does know what's going on. Uh, and she's really good at what she what she does, you know? And so I can't wait to talk to her. But that that's the thing, like the, the things from my childhood that really blows me away more than anything. You know, I wish I could, I wish I had a time machine so I could go back and tell little Ross, like, oh my God, you're right about everything. You're totally right. And you're totally going to know her. Yeah, it's interesting. Do you have like a specific question you're just dying to ask Sally on your podcast today? I do. <laughs> we're gonna we're, we're gonna have to tune into Hello Ross to find out. What I it do. Is. I sat down yesterday. Of course, the, my interview. I don't know what your interview process is, but it's very different for the podcast than it is for anything else, right? For the red carpet, like I said, I have the encyclopedic knowledge, but that's for that two and a half minute interview. For these longer in depth things, you know, I want to talk about her thoughts on current television. Uh, I want to talk about what it takes to to be the best. You know, um, I want to talk about. Well, there's so much to talk and, and also about what do you do once you're an icon? What's next? You know, once you've done it, what's next? So, I mean, those are the kind of kind of deep combos I'm going to have. I also have red glasses I might put on that I all, you know, the ones I wear as when I'm bossy Rossi on um, uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. I had red glasses and I put them on. So I think you should put them on. Oh, I love it. That's great. Good. Have you ever had, like you said, like who's like just a celebrity that you interviewed on the red carpet, like where it didn't go well, like you said, some are rude. Well, I write about the, the, those ones, um, some of them in, uh, my second book name drop. And, uh, you know, there were some people who just, especially in the early days, didn't know what the hell was going on, you know, because you have to remember the red carpet before I was on it. And before Joan and Melissa sort of did the, what they did at E, which was sort of happening simultaneously was, was way more stuffy, you know, that people were having a real, like a lot of fun on that red carpet. And I, this one's not in the book, so I'll tell you a story that's not in name drop. But I remember um, I was covering, oh, it, this was at the Vanity Fair party a different year and Usher was walking down and it was like height of confessions. Usher was the biggest deal in the world. And he was walking down and his publicist said, you get one question. And I was like, one question. <laughs> I don't know who I thought I was, but Usher walked up to me and I go, well, your publicist says I get one question. So what's your favorite thing about me? Like, he just like looked at me like, what? And he left. <laughs> I was like, well, there you go. Um, but, uh, you know, I thought most people would be down to play. He was not. Wow. Do you have a favorite award show that you've covered? I mean, they're all so different, I would imagine. Or are the they Oscars. all just, yeah. The Oscars are it. Yeah, that, because I think everything, no shade, but everything is an appetizer leading up to the, uh, leading up to the Oscars, or at least it was. Who knows where the state of pop culture is now? It's different. It's different. The Oscars are different. It's all different. But when I, I began really studying the, uh, the Oscars uh, in the early 90s, my mom got me a book on the history of the Oscars, and I would just study and memorize, study and memorize. I would write down the new ones. Uh, you know, every year the nominees and include them in my memorization. I just lived for it. Now, I don't know. It's lost something in terms of its cultural relevance. I don't know if it's the movies people are making or what, but it's not as, it's not as big as it used to be. I would agree with that. Well, listen, you talk about these pinch me moments. We have Sally, Jesse, Raphael coming up on Hello, Ross. But I mean, where does the view fall on your just list of, I mean, I watched you on the view. I mean, that's- You did? I did. It I've, was, I, I've read all your stuff, Ross. I've watched you everywhere. I, I've uh, followed your career for a long time. Well, thank you for, thanks for keeping up, you know. Um, the View welcome. was really, really fascinating. I loved The View. I would watch it all the time. You know, Barbara Walters, I wrote a paper on her in college. I love, I love present tense Barbara Walters. I think she's extraordinary. That book she wrote, Audition, is American history through the eyes of somebody who changed American history and documented it. It is, she is fascinating. Her career is fascinating. Um, she was very kind to me. And then one day, not so much, you know, um, in, in the early days when I first started going on The View. And then, and then I came back, you know, all these years later. And um, 
all of this is in the, in the story, but they, I, we were, I was very close to being the first man ever hired on The View. Um, in fact, they told me, get ready to move to New York. We're having a meeting this afternoon um, and we are informing the network that we want to hire you. And then I got on a plane and I, you know, I splurged for Wi-Fi because I was going to be a new co-host on The View. I could afford it, right? And I refreshed, this was after a nap on the plane and I refreshed and the headline on TMZ was, you know, Sherry Shepard, Jenny McCarthy and uh, Bill Getty all fired at The View, blah, 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 blah. They had a meeting with executives today. I was like, <laughs> it all just, it all just disappeared right there, you know, and no one ever knew, no one ever knew except us. And it was, it was heartbreaking, but, but look what it led to, you know what I mean? I'm st I still got to where I was meant to be. And to be quite frank, talking with Drew every day about news stories that aren't political, even though I love politics, but that are about good news and funny news and pop culture is such a better fit for me than anything like that. And it really was like that simple, like it was going to be you, like they were going to announce it. It was really going to happen. It was going to be me and one other man joining Sherry, uh, Jenny and Whoopi. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then like, do you, are you at the point in like, I saw obviously that must have hurt at that time. It sounds like. Yeah. Uh-huh. But it was almost like, I didn't really believe it was going to happen. So there was not, I didn't even know what an offer was. So I didn't even know the, the monetary, but it wasn't about the monetary. It was about, oh my God, I almost got to the dream to the thing, but it didn't like crush me. Cause I knew it would still happen. I knew somehow, but yeah, it was, it was weird. And I almost didn't put it in the book because I was like, but then it's so true. It actually is what happened. Where do you think, you know, cause you could ask Sally how she feels about this too. Like, where do you think, like, do you think it's time, you know, like we have the talk with Jerry O'Connell, like, do you think it's time to mix up the view and have like some, like a regular male pose? I, I think the view's doing great. I think the view is, is as good as it's ever been. I think they really are in their zone. I think the production on it is, um, is top notch. And, you know, I think, I think they know what they're doing. Yeah, I, I, I would think so too. Yeah. Yes, yes and yes. What was, <laughs> you know, well, yes and yes. I mean, like you say, like Barbara was nice to you until she wasn't like, did you read Ladies Who Punch? Like, do you feed into all of that? I mean, Of course heard... I read it all. Yeah, I'm fascinated by it all. And you know, I'm great friends with Rosie O'Donnell, who is one of the uh, truest humans I've ever met. Like she's just very tapped into being a human. She's She's very honest and generous and straightforward. I love her. Um, and you know, she has, of course, her, her insight. You should talk to her one day. I don't know if you have, but she has incredible insight and stories. And, um, listen, I, I write in, in the book, which I feel like I'm promoting